All right, welcome to my first gear list video of what I'm taking with me on the Appalachian Trail this year. And in this video specifically, I'm gonna talk about my big three or big four. So that's gonna be my backpack, my tent, my sleeping bag, and my sleeping pad. These are gonna be kind of like the biggest, most important pieces of gear, the most expensive. And if I make a whole video just about my big three, I can kind of get into the specifics of each piece of gear a little more and tell you guys why I'm picking each of these things. So let's get into that. So these four pieces of gear that I have right in front of me are completely different from the gear that I had with me on the Appalachian Trail in 2021. I spend a lot of time looking at gear online and researching things, and I think that what I came up with works best for my hiking style and my personal preferences, so I'm really happy with it. Up first, I'm gonna talk about my backpack. So right here, I have the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Unbound 40 backpack. This is a fairly new piece of gear to me. I got it a couple months ago. I have taken it on some day hikes, fully loaded with all my gear, and it's been comfortable, but I haven't taken it on an overnight yet, but I have a really good feeling about this backpack. So as the name implies, it's a 40 liter backpack, but that's just in the big compartment right here. There's actually an additional 9 liters of storage with all of these outside pockets. The total weight of this backpack comes in at 1.9 pounds, or about 30 ounces, but I have made adjustments to it, like adding pockets, changing the hip belt, so that has probably fluctuated a little bit. I ordered this in a size medium. Um, I'm about 5'8", and it fits pretty well for me. This is rated to carry about 40 pounds of gear, which I think is a lot, so no matter how much gear or how much food I'm carrying in this, I feel like it's going to stay pretty comfortable on my back. Hyperlite Mountain Gear said that they created this pack with through hiking and accessibility to your gear as their top priorities. Just with the amount of pockets, I think they achieved that. So something they did differently on this pack is that they made all the seams on the outside so that way the seams on the inside are flatter and they were able to t like seam tape it better which increased the waterproofness or water resistance of this pack which I think would be great for the Appalachian Trail because it is a very rainy and wet trail. So the fact that this has increased water resistance is huge. So back to the point of having gear very accessible, I think they achieved this with these super oversized water bottle pockets on the side. They are bigger than any other backpack that I've had. And there's a shock cord to kind of like cinch it closed and keep your gear secured in there or keep your water bottles secured. So with this big pocket on the front, they used a new material called Dyneema Stretch. Um, so you can really stuff a lot of gear in here. It stretches out a lot. And I like the fact that it's a solid color and kind of hides your gear. There's also an access to the bottom of the pocket right here in case you have little things that fall down. I'm most likely going to be storing my tent stakes in here, so they're always really easy to find. There's also a pocket on the bottom of the pack with a trash port, which is a new feature to me that I'm really excited about because I eat most of my snacks while I'm hiking. So the fact that there's a little spot to put the wrappers so they're kind of out of the way is going to be really convenient for me. There's a big entry right here, which I think would be good for storing gloves or hats or things that I put on and off frequently throughout the day. I ended up switching the hip belt of this backpack so I don't have the hip belt pockets anymore. Instead, I kind of have this loop, which I think I will put a carabiner on it and attach my Kula cloth or just attach anything else that I kind of need. Um, haven't really given that much thought beyond the Kula cloth. Instead of side pockets on this backpack, I'm gonna be wearing a fanny pack and that's gonna have so much more storage that the pockets that came with this would have had. I also added a pouch for my phone and a pouch for a water bottle while I'm hiking. This backpack does have a frame. There's kind of one stay in the middle. There's also about a quarter inch of foam that's gonna just make this really comfortable and structured opposed to a 
unframed backpack. Some people would probably say that this backpack is a little overpriced compared to other backpacks on the market. It comes in at $369. I believe I had a 15% off coupon code when I bought it, so if I know what that is, I'll make sure to put that in the description of this video in case you want to pick up one of these for yourself. But I am really excited to be using this on the AT this year. This next piece of gear has honestly never left my house before, so I don't have an official review on it, but it is the 20 degree zip around sleeping bag from z -Pax. On the AT in 2021, I had a 10 degree bag, but this year I wanted to switch to a 20 degree bag because I'm starting a little bit later in the year and I figured I could save a little bit of weight by doing that. This is a fairly new bag um, for z -Packs. Like I said, it's 20 degrees and it comes in at 21 ounces. They haven't gotten the temperature rating officially tested, but they believe the 20 degrees is more of a transitional 20 degrees, so it's in between comfort level and survival level. So if it's 20 degrees outside and I'm in this sleeping bag, I should be comfortable enough to sleep, but I will probably still feel the cold. But I will keep you guys updated on how this performs for me in different types of weather on the trail. This bag comes in different options when it comes to sizing. I ended up getting the standard width and the medium height. The medium height is good for people up to six feet and I'm 5'8", so I think that's gonna be big enough. It has 900 fill power goose down inside and it has some type of treatment that keeps it 90% drier than regular down. Not quite sure, but I think that's a good thing, right? You can see on the top of the bag, there's a vertical baffles with the down. So if you're laying down, the down's not gonna fall to the side of you and that's gonna keep you warmer. And this right here is the foot box. It's got a rectangular foot box and plenty of room for the feet inside. The inside and the outside fabric of this bag is treated with water repellent. So any moisture from the skin or from the outside environment, um, it's going to stay dry. So again, the name of this bag is called the zip around. So you can see it's got a full length zipper that goes to the bottom and even around the foot box. So if you unzip it all the way, it can lay out to a blanket. So this is what it looks like completely unzipped. On the AT in 2021, I also had a sleeping bag that did this and it was pretty helpful for a couple different reasons. One, when it warms up, and it might be too hot to sleep in the sleeping bag. You can sleep with it kind of just draped over you as a blanket. And also if you're just hanging around camp or watching a sunset or a sunrise, you can just kind of cover yourself like this and it's very cozy. It does have two zippers, so you can either zip it down from the top, that's gonna help you get in and out of the sleeping bag easier. You can also unzip it straight from the bottom of the toe box um, if you wanna stick your feet out. Or if you're like me, a lot of times I would put my socks and shoes on in the morning while still in my sleeping bag if it's super cold, so I'm probably gonna be doing that. Now, some people get worried with zippers because they think cold air will go through it because there's no down um, but that's not the case in this bag there's actually like a draft tube that goes the whole length of the zipper so that's gonna prevent the cold air from getting in and just keep you warmer inside the sleeping bag there's also this material by the zipper called a zipper guard and that's gonna help the zipper from snagging on the inside and outside material which is pretty common sometimes so this is the top of the sleeping bag there's no mummy hood that's going to go around your head and keep you warm but like i said this is good for people up to six feet so i'm going to have a couple inches to kind of like pull this over my head and face if i need to there's also this cord to cinch down the top and kind of keep the drafts from coming in. I'm pretty confident that this bag is going to keep me warm on the trails. If I do get any sort of intense cold weather, I'll probably just end up finding a hostel because those are pretty common and accessible on the Appalachian Trail. I love a good hostel stay, especially when the weather outside is not great. This bag comes in at $479, which is a lot, but something I do like about this is that it ships within one to two weeks. 
I was going to do another custom quilt on Enlightened Equipment, but their custom bags take sometimes months. So I wasn't sure if I could create my own quilt and still get it in time before I leave. So I went with this one. So to accompany my sleeping bag, I'm going to be taking the Thermarest Neo Air X Therm sleeping pad. So because I went from a 10 degree bag on the AT last time to a 20 degree bag, I decided to go with the warmer sleeping pad to kind of even it out a little bit. So this comes in at only 15 ounces, which is really lightweight for a sleeping pad, especially for how warm this is going to keep me and insulate me from the cold ground. It's got an R value of 6.9 which is really high up there. That's why you see people winter camping with this sleeping pad. It's about 2.5 inches thick and 20 inches wide and it's full length. I know some people have like half length inflatable pads, but this is gonna go all the way from my head to my feet. This packs down really small to like the size of a water bottle, but when it's in my pack, I'll probably have it in like this shape in the back of my backpack to prevent any like sharp pieces of gear from sticking into me. This is a much newer and improved valve compared to my last sleeping pad. So it's kind of gotten an inflate and deflate mode when you kind of toggle this on and off. That way when you're blowing air into it, you're not losing air at the same time. So it makes it much more easier and efficient. So I probably won't carry this sleeping pad the entire hike. I'm thinking once it warms up and I get past maybe the Roan Mountain area, I might switch back to the regular Neo Air X Lite, so kind of what I had on the Appalachian Trail in 2021, but since then they have come out with newer versions that the biggest thing is they're a lot quieter. So if you can notice, these are really loud. Um, so if the new version of the Neo Air X Lite ever comes back in stock, I'm probably going to get that and add that to my gear somewhere in the middle of the trail. But I will definitely update you guys when and if I do switch my sleeping pad. All right, the last of the big three is my tent right here in this little tiny bag. I have my Z-Pax Plex Solo. I absolutely love how small and how little space this is gonna take up in my backpack. It's a one person one trekking pole tent. I have been able to take this tent out on the trails and do a lot of backpacking in it this year and I am really impressed. I've always been nervous about one person tents but this really surprised me when it came to room. It might not have that much room above my head when I'm sitting in the tent but there's a lot of room to the side of me when I'm laying down and that's great for just kind of having my backpack in the tent and spreading out all my gear. I got this in a white color which is a little bit transparent but it's also super light. This tent comes in at 13.9 ounces which I believe is the lightest fully enclosed backpacking tent on the market. It can take anywhere between 6 and 10 stakes to set it up. I always go for all 10 just because it kind of maximizes the amount of space inside. And when you're laying down, I think you have seven and a half feet of space from one end to the other. So that's a lot. I used the duplex tent on the AT last time, and this is pretty much just the one person version of that tent. I am really happy with z -Pax tents. They seem pretty waterproof and durable, and I just... I feel like they're really reliable for me on trail. I know a lot of people have different experiences with them and I know there's going to be condensation but I've had a lot of experience and a lot of nights in z -Pax tents and I'm going to keep on using them. I made a whole video about this 10 and the z -Pax duplex and kind of comparing them and going over the pros and cons. So I will link that video in the description. I also have a first look video that I did when I got the Hyperlite Mountain Gear backpack. So I'll also link that video. And that is my big three for the Appalachian Trail in 2023. So I thought it would be fun to compare both the weight and the price of my big four from when I did the AT in 2021 to what I decided to hike with this year. 
And in 2021, my big four came in at 5.12 pounds, and the total cost was $1,603 to purchase those four things. And for my big four this year, everything comes in at 5.04 pounds and cost me $1,618. And it kind of shocked me how similar these weights and numbers are to each other. So the biggest difference I notice is that my backpack this year weighs 10 ounces heavier than my last backpack, which was the Z-Pax Arc Air 50 liter pack. I'm okay with these 10 extra ounces because I think the load capacity on this new pack is a little bit higher, which is going to let me carry all the gear in my pack a little more comfortably. So I think those extra 10 ounces are actually going to help my gear not feel as heavy. So that's perfect. And then on the opposite, my sleeping bag this year is almost nine ounces lighter. And that's because the temperature rating is a little higher. So I went from a 10 degree bag to a 20 degree bag. So that saved me almost nine ounces of weight. My sleeping pad does weigh a little more this year, but it is almost double as warm. And also my tent this year weighs a couple ounces less because I went from a two person tent to a one person tent. It was really interesting looking all that up and comparing and contrasting the weights and the price tags of my gear from last time and this time, because even though the numbers are really similar to each other, I think the gear this year is going to suit me much better and I'm gonna be happier about it on the trail. If you have any questions leave them in the comments i will obviously be putting out a full gear list video of everything i'm going to be taking with me on the trail but i really wanted to do this big three video so i can really get into the specifics of these really important pieces of gear so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one bye gotta have the lasagna with the meat sauce in the background